as a, being both a choral singer and a choral conductor, I was curious about what happened be in between the singers. And uh, so I'm, I wrote my thesis about cooperations uh, between singers. And uh, it consists of four articles. The first one and the last one are made of um, um, interviews. The first one with choral conductors on their view on, on how people cooperate within the choral voices. And the last one uh, was a sort of a follow-up follow -up with the focus group interviews out of stimulated recall with the choral singers. Uh, singers that had previously been recorded, and so I, I let them take part of what they had been doing. So the, the second article is a sort of a methodological um, tryout how to to um, make recordings that you could also um, compare and decide who may might be the leader and take the lead because that was my experience as a choral singer that if I if I was unsure of a part when I was sort of sort of trying to practice at home when I came to the choir I I suddenly felt secure because I had so much support from my neighbors and perhaps I also could support some time but I, I realized that there is an ongoing cooperation within the choir, and that was interesting to try to study. And then the third article was also about <coughs> those, um, um, all those research uh, um, examinations I, I did. So these are the articles, uh, you can have those afterwards, uh, where they were published. Um, when I started this, I, I tried to just out of um, curiosity, try to find out if two people are to sing something and nothing has been decided on who is to take the lead and they were not given music, there, was, there were two experienced voice teachers that I asked to sing this folk tune, which is um, sometimes you can vary, there's nothing as, as a folk tune, there can be many variants, variations on, on how to start this song. So these four could be the starts of the song. And these two uh, voice teachers were asked to just join together, stand side by side, like you do in the choir, not to face each other, which was actually what they did. Just when I asked them to sing together, they st st uh, placed them in front of each other so that they could look each other in the eyes and, and the mouth. But I, I put them side by side, like you do in the choir, and they were giving the starting note, and then they were to sing. And they were also to s decide how to pick up the tempo and who was going to take the lead. And uh, this experiment actually I did also in, in uh, Pro Tools and examined with Melodyne, which was very interesting because I had the same experience as Håkan. I also wrote to the, the um, uh, constructor of Melodyne and told him about my research and he was very generous and gave me a free copy to use. Then the university w where I was studying by then in Örebro, they decided that <coughs> still it was more cheap to use Cubase, which has an integrated um, function, very audio, which works almost like Melodyne. Anyway, here you can see the start, uh, the text in the middle, and you can see the lower voice has a slide up, um, that is, both voices slide up to the first note, but, but uh, the, 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 the down voice uh, really grips uh, a tone. And there is not very much differences between those here, but this was my experiment just to get started, uh, to see what could be done. And then I went on and made a larger um, um, recordings. Here are six soprano voices with my, within my high school uh, choir. They were to sing a Bellman tune, and even here I could spot some things that I wasn't expecting. There were some irregularities um, that I... I'm not sure if you can really see that, but uh, on the top one, uh, this showed me that these girls uh, with circles, they had probably known this tune before, because they made variations that are sometimes done, but were not in the music. So the first one made this uh, little uh, 
um, embellishment. Instead of Tim Gloss, a new fult, she sang Tim Gloss, a new fult, and the low one Tim Gloss, a new fult, uh, which was not in the music but was by tradition made. So I, I thought maybe these are experienced singers and, and um, maybe that could be show me something in, in the long run. This is another recording that I made. This is how it looks when you look at the, the chart before you analyze the, the individual voices. This is Utiva Hage, which is the text says downwards. You can see uh, how the vowels make the, the expansion. This, this looks like a, a canoe um, competition or something. <laughs> But then you can look into the, the single voices. But, but I'll show you first what I... This is the tune. Uh, and this is the tenor voice, which, which I will, will uh, examine further. This is how it looks uh, when I start to sing this. Let them sing. These are very unexperienced singers. This was, I think, this was early in their first semester of choral singing. Boys in the ages of, of uh, 16 years, and they had, most of them had never sung in choir before. And they didn't read music, which was a good thing for me, because I thought maybe these will also, by that, uh, try to lean on each other. So uh, I can also show you the same thing, but on the left, you can see when I when I close um, or mute the channels, so I can go in and listen to each single voice. Now, see, I, I mute on the left. But then the program can make uh, an analyze of each single voice that I want to lis listen to. So I have some, uh, three of them I picked up. Um, the first one goes like this. <laughs> You can hear that th those um, pointed microphones are quite good because they don't pick up very much of the surrounding sound from the others. Next one. And the third one. Quite good. Uh, actually, he sang perfect. B only he took his breath over one note. Uh, so the the small lines, as uh, you can understand, are the accurate pitch, and then the program makes these boxes where the program decides that this is the main um, tone focus. So after that, I, um, as Håkan also said, <laughs> these programs are not made to do this, <laughs> but the program is made to, to then shift and, and move those boxes. I can move them in time, back or forth. I can move them up and down if they are not singing in, uh, in tune or pitch. So the program is made to change uh, their singing, but I, um, as Håkan, uses them just to uh, to pick up exactly what is done. So in, in order to compare these, I have to print them or put them in the computer, make a screen print and then compare them. And I have to make them so they are synchronized and um, then, then I can look at what is happening time-wise. So the lowest voice was the one who sang perfect, uh, the, the exact notes. And he is ahead of the others. And the way they were seated, I could also then say that the, the top voice, who started as the soprano voice, ac actually, with the, f the F and the A sharp, the, the A flat, uh, which is the soprano voice, he changed his uh, um, tune into the 
the voice number three, as did number two when he mistakenly sang a C where it should be an A flat, and he he changed his uh, his voice to that. Also, at the end, the first voice picked the wrong note and made a glissando up to, to the D-flat, where it should be. Another excerpt with actually the same group is a Swedish uh, song by choral, very, very famous and very often sung in the, the close to Christmas, uh, by Ut Olsson Advent. This is an imitation part where I also focused on the tenors. Um, this is actually together with organ, but here we have only the, the, um, the vocal part. Uh, what was interesting by this time was that they had a student teacher who wasn't really aware of what was happening. Um, otherwise, probably an experienced teacher would have uh, corrected what happened. So this is, um, again, first or maybe second sing-through. Very insecure. One voice sang like this. This is a little bad copy, but... This is the next thing through. Ten. He just got mad and <coughs> screamed out, Tent! Because he couldn't find his voice, actually. Uh, another one made like this. This is the third um, sing through. Here is an interesting thing happening. That figure doesn't e really come uh, in that voice. And um, this figure is actually the soprano part. When I expand it and, and put it together with the, the supposed uh, tenor part, you can see it, it's not ex at all the same. But when I look into the parts of both the soprano and the tenor part, you can easily see that this was taken by mistake from the soprano part, by this tenor. What was happening then was that this spread. So he implied, uh, implied the first wrong mistake, and then the, this spread within the tenor voice, so that more and more of the tenors uh, sang the same mistake. So I had discovered a leader, unfortunately a <laughs> bad leader, but he was uh, no doubt a le leader. Another experiment I did was, uh, this was also a sort of a, an idea I had to to see if it was possible also to to examine whether the the quality of the voices would spread and and if you by singing as also as my ex own experience from singing in choirs I, I use different voices in different choirs uh, and 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 it was interesting to see what happens uh, with people if they don't hear each other in the choral voice. So I made a very, very simple experiment. I just put earplugs in the ears, which is not very comfortable. You sing, uh, you s hear very much of your voice. But this was, as I said, a pilot study, just to see if it was possible to make any uh, anything that you could uh, later expand with m m m earmuffs and, and um, a bit more comfortable say, things to, to use to... Uh, to uh, to prevent you from, from listening to your neighbors, uh, which sounds crazy when you're singing in a choir, because that's sort of what it's all about. But this, uh, this part of a Max Rego motet that I used for a church choir, quite uh, experienced church choir, they had never sung this before, so they had to look at it just and sing it by sight and put uh, um, ear protection in their ears and then sing it, they got the, the starting tune, the chord, and they sang it, and um, then we repeated it a couple of times. Now, uh, it's not in balance, right? it's a little too much soprano.
Then this is only the altos. All those three pickups that I did, one, one with uh, protection in their ear, the second one with hearing each other, and the third one also again uh, without hearing. Then, next time, without protections, you can tell that they sing much louder now, because singing loud with the plugs in your ears is not comfortable. And then there is an, another one. Um, what was very confusing was that, of course, this, the quality of the sound was more together when they could hear each other. But what was more <laughs> not expected was that the choir went flat. They, they, they went down almost a semitone when they hear, heard each other. So <laughs> there was someone in the middle of the choir that was intonating very low, flat, and who brought the whole choir down. And this is a, some examples of where you can really see that. This was one of the sopranos who was sitting in the center of the choir. They were seated with sopranos, altos, uh, basses and tenors. So in the core of the, the choir was this sopranos, uh, especially soprano six. And she also um, made her neighbors below. You can see I put uh, signs or, or uh, lines uh, where the actual pitches are, and you can tell that the boxes are below those pitches all the time. And the same thing happened to the tenors, uh, who were also seated close to this the center. Uh, you can see especially the tenor one, which is, has a very, very big vibrato at the end of uh, that note. Now, my last example, which was also a church choir, and also this one is an experienced uh, church choir. They were singing this piece, Totus um, Tuus by Goretzky, and the choir conductor wasn't pleased with the start, so he t took the, the start over and over and over again and gave me several recordings of the start. And this is also a tenor, um, recording that I examined, and I found out that voice number two was the first one on the note almost all the times. So this is just the, the start, totus. Uh, those lower ones, the, the, the down and the second down um, voices were early, but they didn't really catch the, the real pitch uh, until a little bit later. What was, was, what was very interesting also um, was that later in those focus groups interviews, um, this guy who sang a second voice, second tenor uh, voice, he denied being a, a leader, but the other ones in the section uh, convinced him that he was the one that always was first on the note. But he didn't think so, but this was a proof. Um, so, it also says that it's not always that you know that you're a, a leader. This might be that he was ahead of time, it doesn't really matter. Um, but to, to, uh, to realize if someone is a leader of a voice, it's not always to say that he's always or she is always the first one, because they can also be too early. But to, to decide that someone is a leader, they have to do something that the others follow maybe not expectedly, like the one who sang the wrong notes and got the whole voice body to, to sing along. So, this was my presentation on uh, seeing the sound. Thank you.